In this video, I'm going to share with you my new favorite defense in Madden 22. Well, not really my new favorite defense, my old favorite defense, but ran in a little bit of a new way and something that I think you're going to find a lot of freedom in in terms of how we're going to start playing defensively in Madden 22. Now, again, this is a concept, okay? What we're going to about to show you is a concept. It's actually a very good concept out of a specific defense in the 3-3-5 wide, but you can apply this to other coverages and or, um, other formations utilizing the same coverage. Before we get into the video, I wanna ask you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Every day I post content that can help you become a better Madden player. So if you are looking to become a better player, uh, I would really encourage you to hit the subscribe button. It's free to do that. Today we're taking a look at the 46 playbook. We're gonna look at a coverage out of 335 wide that I really like right now. And something that I think is really, really underrated uh, because of how the coverage is gonna to work together to kind of take away some of the most popular concepts uh, and we actually have a full ebook on the the four six playbook so if you want to get all of my madden ebooks you can join our patreon there's a link in the description to sign up for that what that is is it's a membership it's a ten dollar a month membership but the cool part about it is you don't only get access to one or two ebooks you get access to uh, actually we have 17 or 18 offensive and defensive guides for madden 22 over at the Patreon. So it's a great way for you to become a better player. The other cool part about it is, as long as you're a member, anytime we release new eBooks, which are about once a month, and anytime that we release new exclusive updates, which are about a couple times a week, we actually just released a major one today for Trips Tied In. Um, if you want, you get, you get all that for free as well. So just by being a member, you basically get everything. If you wanna sign up for that, there's a link in the description below. All right, guys. So what we're gonna do today? I'm actually super, super pumped about this con or this video. Um, I was messing around with this yesterday and just kind of testing the limits of this. It's actually a really good defense. Um, it's the Cover Four Show Two out of three three five wide. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Cover Four Show Two is very similar to the Cover Four Quarters. Now, I've talked about this before on the channel. I've got an ebook on nickel normal. I've got a match defensive game uh, game plan where basically we try to teach exactly what all the match coverages do, including the Cover Three matches. Um, but the bottom line is this, Cover Four Quarters is a match coverage. Three, three, five wide Cover Four Show Two is exactly like Cover Four Quarters from nickel normal. It's just out of three, three, five wide. Why would it be advantageous for us to have a match coverage in 335 wide? Well, a couple reasons. 335 wide has really good pressure, really good run defense, really good Mabel defense. Most importantly, though, it's the only formation in the game that, um, next to 335 normal, but it's the only formation in the game that has a match coverage because 335 normal doesn't have that. And it also has the ability for your linebackers to be cross manned on anyone on the field. One of the most in incredibly important abilities to have if you're gonna try to get a stop in Madden 22. You need cross man, you need the ability to make all the adjustments in the world, and three through five allows you to do that from a coverage perspective. So, I wanna teach you what I like to do out of this cover four show too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out in three through five normal, whatever we wanna come out in. I like to typically come out in cover four drop. And then um, I'm just gonna come out in uh, some trips and we'll show you how this works so it's real simple um, what we're gonna do is we are going to audible down to cover four show two now notice real quick do you see that guy move there if we don't want him to move we just need to wiggle him a little bit and then he won't move I'll show that in just a second but here's your setup first things first you're gonna press you're gonna crash your line out a couple times and then most importantly you're gonna want to blitz your user so that you get better sheds and then now here's the adjustments that I like to run. What you can do on the back side of this is if you want to manually back off the individual guys, you certainly can. But here's the key adjustment for cover four quarters. We're going to shade our coverage up. And the reason why we're going to do that, number one, it's going to keep us from getting burned over the top if they run a fade to the outside. Take a look on the left side here. You see there's a fade there. I don't press him. I get really good coverage over the top. Okay. So they don't press. So it's basically like shaded up man. Let me give you an example. It's basically like this right here. Mike Blitz zero, shaded up. And you have everybody manned up. But what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with Mike Blitz zero when you run shaded up man coverage is that the zone or the, the man coverage 
is guarding routes that doesn't need to guard, like a flat route or like a um, like a little zig route or something like that, little underneath concepts that doesn't need to be guarding. And then it foregoes the ability to double team concepts. So what happens if you if you face a lot of man? Here's what they're gonna do. They got two underneath routes to pull your purples out of the way, and then they got two routes over here that are gonna beat man. The beauty of what I'm going to show you with Cover 4 Show 2 is it doesn't allow them to be able to do that. So uh, what we're going to do here, again, wiggle this guy, see he doesn't move. Come down in here, crash your line up, let your linebacker, and then shade up. That's going to turn them into purples. That's going to stop out routes. That's going to stop motion slants. That's going to stop a uh, little running back wheel, or not wheels, but it will help a little bit with the wheels. But it's also it's going to stop a lot of the underneath junk, right? A lot of the underneath junk. Then what it allows us to do is now we can begin adjusting our coverage with man assignments on key individuals. Let me talk about one. The first one is that when you're playing trips tight end, you want to take this guy. He's what I call a joker, swing defender, whatever you want to call him. This guy can do whatever you want. Whatever you want to do with him, you can do. So we're going to man him. Most of the time, we're going to man him up on the number three, and then we're going to spread our linebacker so we get a jam animation. And then lastly, we're going to bluff blitz one of our defensive linemen. Really simple defense. But I'll tell you right now, this is one of the most effective coverages in the game. And what we're going to be able to do with this is our user has a absolute ton of freedom. Because if that guy gets good coverage there, we can come down here and we play really, really solid coverage across the board with this. If you don't want to shade up, you don't have to. If you don't want to shade up, you don't have to. You can leave them jammed up, and you can leave the quarter flats. The quarter flats will do a really good job. They play very similar to curl flats, to be honest. Um, they're just going to match underneath routes if they, you know, match wheel routes really. Um, but where I like the curl flats is primarily what people will start to do is they'll start to do stuff like this. They'll option route the running back. So where I like these curl flats is for situations like that because now this is your coverage, and you're going to stand here. And what you'll notice is this guy sits right in here. So it's a lot easier for the three rec to be able to play it. The running back is one of the most important players on any offensive uh, scheme. By doing it like this, we limit the effectiveness the running back can have um, on us. Let's talk about another formation for a second. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, Bunch. How do we run this against Bunch? Well, basically the same. We're going to... Come down, shade up. That gives us a curl flat for running back routes on the right and for flood on the right, or for flood on the right, running back routes on the left. Now, in this, um, the number one player that is most effective out of bunch is really the slot. So, what we can actually do is a little bit of an adjustment here, but we can bluff blitz the D in on the left side. That's going to basically man lock him on the running back. He's going to really be good against the running back. Then we can take the linebacker on the right, and we can put him in whatever zone we want to, and then we can actually take that slot corner and man him up on the slot receiver. So you see now we've got really, really good coverage. We still have our matching principles. Our matching principles don't change, but let's say they run a running back wheel. Well, now all of a sudden, take a look. you got great coverage on the wheel, and you've got double team on that corner route. Very good defense for that. Let's say they run a tight end corner. So let's say they run something like this, like a little tight end a uh, little tight end flooding combination, okay? Um, you're in this coverage right here, boom, boom. And then what you'll see is this tight end corner will get matched to the sideline. So what it does, what, what quarters does is, especially against compression sets, is it forces the routes to have to come into the space of your user. They have to throw over the middle of the field. You know, let's say, for example, that they're, um, you know, one of the best plays in the game this year is verticals. By far, one of the best plays in the game. So let's go to verticals. Well, what we can do, remember, we like to manage the slot here. So it looks something like this. Now, because we've manned up that slot, we can actually take this guy and have a lot of freedom now with this guy, especially against a trip set like a bunch. Okay? So what we can do with this guy is whatever we want. He's another swing defender. So if we want to man him up on the tight end, you know, there's nothing to stop, or I guess there is something. We could man this guy up at the tight end and then purple this guy. So you see now, see how this is all working together? And what you can see now is verts, you got a cross man there, you got good coverage there, and they're going to try to throw that in traffic. And now your user has freedom 
to be able to run with stuff like that. Because you go with something, you know, cross banning to me is the most important thing uh, for match. If you can cross ban on a match, you're going to have a lot of opportunity. I don't know what happened with this guy. I think we just had a weird little in a weird little situation there. But anyways, you see here, I can man him up on the tight end. I can man that guy up on the slot. I got a three rec for the back. And then I've also got a purple zone over there. You know, and, and, and this is going to stop any bombs. They're not going to be able to bomb me over the top because I've got a ton of coverage over on that side of the field. So if they go to verts, now you see again, all I've got to do is kind of help on the crosser. And everything else played pretty pretty effectively. Okay, So the point is this simplifies your user responsibility. It forces them to have to throw the ball over the middle of the field. It gives you kind of the best of both worlds from a man-to-man -man perspective and from a match perspective, you could do something simple like this. It's a very simple way to run match against this. Probably not as good against the, the, the you know the bombs, but very very good concepts here as well. Very good for flood. If they try to run flood on you, they're going to really regret it because they're going to see you're running match. So they're going to go to this. Uh, I guarantee you they're going to go to something like this. This is a great match beater. But again, you know we're going like this. And now they're trying to hit that slot and they're throwing right into a curl flat. Okay. So that's how this, this cons, this, and you can do this to any formation in the game. That's why I like it too, because it's not just man. It's not just zone. It's a little bit of both. You're utilizing man on key players. And that's really important. Don't be afraid to cross man. Don't be afraid to cross man. Also, I think that's one of the most secrets, the biggest secrets of this. Don't be afraid to mess with your coverage a little bit. So, like, let's say here, you know, we're sitting here against spread. Who's the biggest threat out of spread? The running back. The running back, 100%. So, we're going to bluff blitz here to get a little bracket on the running back. We're going to cross man that guy onto the running back. And then I like against spread to back these guys off so that they don't match a hitch. Um, no, and, but now they can't throw corner routes on this. They can't throw corner routes on this. And then if you put the purples, you know, like that against spread. You might want to bring that guy in, but we shaded up, got our purples out there on the field. We got the man, the cross man in the bracket. We don't really care about the running back at this point. So now what are they going to run? Where are they going to hit us? They're going to hit us on crossers and posts, which we have matched, we have coverage on, and we're free to use her. We're free to use her. So again, so you got your curl flats. Um, you know, if you want to, just pinch this guy in, just so you can have him, have him inside here. But now, I mean, now let's say, for whatever reason, the running back's not really a threat. Okay. Well, who's the threat? Well, it's the slot. Okay. Well, the slot's the threat. Now this guy has a ton of freedom because I don't need, I don't need to worry about that slot if he goes vertical. That's what these corners do. So now that gives me a, a lot more freedom now that I can do other things with this with this defender. Now this defender here, I can throw him in man coverage on the running back. Just saying. And then now, you know, they're on something like this. And look, I mean, look, look at the coverage. Look at the coverage. Look how it handles it. So that's my point is understanding quarters allows you to cross man really anybody. And that's to me a massive, massive value um, with this. So, you know, we could go purple. We could go purple. And then, and then of course, what we've got now is the ability to cross man. So what we can do off of this is we can take this backer here. Let's say we want to cross man him onto, um, let's because we want the leverage, right? So let's say we want to put him on the running back. That's fine. But then let's say we're worried about, let's say we're worried about um, the tight end running a crossing route. But we can do a little switcheroo, right? We can take this guy, go here. And then now, what we can easily do, if we're really worried about that slot, just man them up with the slot. And then now we just don't have a purple on that side. The point is, you can adapt this coverage very, very well. And it's very difficult for them to, you know, handle it because it's very, confu it's very confusing. And you've got great coverage, and you can adapt it to really anything. It's basically like you're playing man coverage with two purples, but they don't ever run into each other, which is really, really important. And when you use the cross man properly, they handle some of the stuff like slants or crossers, whatever, that they're going to throw your way. The, the biggest one of which is the wheel route. And let me show you what I mean by that. So by taking this guy here, 
You have a purple, which will cover the wheel to the outside, and then you have an in. So if I run a, a wheel to R1, watch this cross, man. I mean, you want to live like that? So that's how you can use this. And you can apply it to anything. That's what's so cool. So like, let's say, um, let's say they're in tight. Let's say they're in tight. Well, we know from experience that to the three wide receiver side is going to play like box and to the back side is going to play like whatever. So we know that we got to be a little bit more concerned with the back side of this formation. So we're going to three wreck this guy over here. We're going to man up the back side. So we go man up here and we go man up there. And now we have our curl flat still protecting us on both sides. And then we have the quarters on the right for the box check. And now all we've got to really worry about is any kind of crosser coming back across our face. So you see here, this is going to defend it fairly well. As you can see right there, very decent coverage. And you force them to have to make a, a tight throw. So this is a new style um, of playing match, a little bit different than what I've talked about before on the channel. This is something I think that actually has a lot of merit right now. And if you utilize cross manning, it's really going to help this coverage a lot. Again, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want to. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you want to. Really, if you want to keep it real simple for yourself, then just call Cover 4 Show 2, shade up, bluff blitz the D-end on the side of the running back, and cross man that guy on anyone you want on the field. On any Whoever the problem is. Whoever the problem is. So you see there, cross man on him, good coverage, and we bag up a post route. So that's what I'm liking to do right now. I think it's a really good way to play right now. And if you don't want to put the curl flats, you don't have to, by the way. You don't have to. You know, you're going to get, if you don't put curl flats, my advice, you're probably going to get a little bit more, um, more than likely, they're going to throw out routes. If you don't put curl flats, they're going to probably throw out routes or wheel routes. That's what they're going to hit you with if you don't put those adjustments out there. But at least you know where you're going to get hit. At least you know where you're going to get hit. But as you can see right here, I mean, this is a really good coverage. So try this out. Mess around with it. Let me know what you think. Uh, we got a lot more on this stuff in the ebook, and really a little bit more formation by formation specific of how exactly you stop this or how exactly you stop that. Why call this versus why call that. So if you want to learn all that stuff, get all the ebooks for one price at 10 bucks. Join the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. And as long as your membership's active, you get everything. You literally get all the ebooks. You get all the updates, everything for just uh, 10 bucks a month. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.